Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Cold Open here on Past T-Show Skin. Today we are looking at another PS freebie, and dear God, do I not want to really Goat Simulator? We all know Goat Simulator. I mean, pretty sure if you haven't seen this game before now, you don't really get into the meme stuff. But uh, yeah, Goat Simulator is a game that started off as a practical joke or as an April Fool's gag while somebody was developing another game. That you know, like somebody was futzing around and trying to put a character into another model system to see what would happen and interacting with a whole bunch of terrible things. And it looked funny as hell. And of course, now it's been spread to everybody on the internet like a mental virus. I mean, like, so um, let's take a wee crack into Simulator for those that are completely uninitiated. And let me explain why I'm actually playing it. So, PlayStation Plus gives you multiple games free per month to play while you're a member of PS Plus. But uh, because of the way I use multiple accounts, multiple countries, I actually have purchased PS Plus for the Hong Kong account. And it's the reason why is because it does have different games. So whenever I do my normal gameplay here for the PlayStation Plus games of the month, I'm going to add these in as additional episodes at the tail end. Just to remind you that this is what's on the Hong Kong account. If you don't like what's on the USA and UK accounts, or Europe, or wherever the hell you may be, I hardly recommend that you go and get this, because it's dirt cheap. Wow, that's loud. Immediately this game annoys me. But being as loud as it is. Hang on a second. Like, that's not even just loud through my recording software, that's loud through the TV as well. <laughs> Jesus. Alright. Let's get this mic a little bit better so you can actually hear me over the top of this. So the obviously the game's are proud of its broken lineage. And um Goat Z tutorial, Goat Z after outbreak, before outbreak, Goat Simulator to Payday, Goat Waste of Space Simulator, Goat MMO Simulator, Goat Simulator, Goat City Bay. Jesus Christ. It's just the fact that this is gone as big as it has. I'm assuming all the rest of these are all uh, downloadable DLC, so I'll just go to straight to good old Goatville. Although I'm, quite, I'm curious about the Goat City City Bay one. Oh, good God. Oh, God, I already know all that. I, I, the worst thing is that's all something I'm all familiar with. Can we do Goat City? Uh, coming soon. So it's all coming soon for any of the ones that you haven't downloaded or bought. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you get Goat City Bay at least. And what about MMO? No. Alright, in that case, let's go with Goat City Bay. God. Like the Mutator Jetpack Blue Street. Oh. So, obviously, it's all designed VR Mutator, plug your goat into the new reality. Uh, it just annoys me just even looking at this. So, yeah. Oh, let's just play. So the um, fact that the games are different between uh, Hong Kong, USA, UK, it's all um, you know. It, it, it sometimes the games are good, sometimes the games are bad. A lot of the times, people complain incessantly about what games are being selected for the UK and USA, and um, the, you can get an idea of why some of that complaints happen because you see what the options are on other. <laughs> other services in other places. Uh, good Simulator, I wouldn't say is a good game. I mean, it's a fun game. Uh, this is the kind of thing that my nephews and nieces will actually spot on my PlayStation and want to play incessantly, which is fair enough to them. That's <laughs> that's their thing. Oh, I forgot that's how you turn on and off Ragdoll. So, um, yeah. Lick. There we go. And get some momentum. Ah, I thought I was going to be able to do that. The, um... The gameplay in this isn't really of interest to me. I'm just going to... See what things I can do with it momentarily. But then I'll probably... Move on and just sit and talk to you guys. Because uh, this is even distracting just with what's going on in it. Quite a nice view. Let's see if I can get myself onto a... Whirly gig or something that'll actually spin me around like a lunatic. 
and we'll see what happens. Hey, that's what I was hoping for. There we go. So you guys can just enjoy the uh, graphical fidelity of such a mad, you know, awesome, weird game. So cool, isn't it? So, um, yeah. Uh, go to some later. Great fun. The um, gaming public tend to actually complain about what's on PlayStation Plus on a monthly basis, which in the end up is a little bit ridiculous, basically considering that everything on the PlayStation service that you get on PS Plus is absolutely free, and you really are paying for online access for the games that you actually own, that you've bought yourself, so you can play them with other people. Um, now, I imagine a lot of people are actually annoyed by the service, and you get the, the PC fans immediately saying, Oh, better on PC, better on PC. And I'm like, okay, yeah, scram, cool. Not all of us play on PC. A lot of us actually are control pad only gamers. Like I personally, like hands wise, I can still play with a keyboard and mouse, but um, I'll never be as good as I was whenever I was a teenager. Like, and I just don't enjoy it. Um, I don't like sitting like this while I'm playing games. I do I, like getting that really relaxed kind of like lying down position. Like they'll be able to lie down on the couch like this. You don't really get whenever you're on a PC setup. No matter how many of my friends tell me otherwise. The um, the games that you get with the PlayStation Plus service are of a, of a level that normally that there's like, what, two of them or tend to be like a very single A indie games or uh, ports of mobile games, which was the case even for a few of the games this month as well, which I, I pr try to point out anytime I spot that. It's just... A bit ridiculous that they actually end up putting out games like that, but it's whatever they get offered to use as part of the service. So the value for money is is does feel like it's decreasing over time. But I mean, the longer that you have PS Plus, the more titles you get that are really enjoyable. And if you're on more than one one Sony platform, it's a no brainer. Like a, a, because I've been on PS Vita, I was on PSP, PS3, PS Vita, and PS4. Then. There's really no reason for me not to use it for myself because just for the library of games I've gained so far, like I'll never ever get the chance to play them all. It's like I'm essentially paying to rent my Steam library <laughs> out to myself while playing online games. So yeah, the discounts on themselves for one of the games I do buy and whenever I do full play through things, it still it still makes me feel comfortable enough that I'm actually not getting unbelievably ripped off. But the big question is on top of that is digital games, digital ownership, do we actually own our games? And the answer is no, we're always sold the service to these games. Uh, I've been burned a number of times over the years by a game that I've really wanted to play, that I've actually been yanked from stores, uh, starting as far back, or sorry, as early as um, Xbox 360 at least, because there was a couple of games that were on 360 that I purchased from the store. I think one, the one I remember the most was actually a copy of Jade Empire, and a, another game, what was it? It was a point-and-click adventure. Oh, God, it was actually a murder mystery one that I really liked. Still Life. And Still Life had been removed because I think it actually had either a vulnerability to the 360 services or the license had been lost or something like that. But um, losing access to that game, and I mean proper losing access to that game, I, even though it was in my library, I still couldn't re-download it. That's, that was the most frustrating thing about it. It was, um, it was completely gone, even though I paid for it which was the worst of things. And now with the examples of PT and um, games that are actually like in people's libraries that they can re-download but are no longer available on the service to purchase, things like the uh, Amazing... Uh, is it Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah, the Amazing Spider-Man video games and the Turtles Mutants of Manhattan game that came out there only about eight months ago. These are things that we need to worry about whenever it comes to archiving. And archiving... Our video game history is kind of one of the more important things to me now. It's a, it feels like being like a digital librarian. It's the reason why so many people like just did not delete their copy of PT whenever the game was actually removed from stores. Like since you went like, oh well, I'm I'm never getting rid of this now. This hard drive is now my hard drive for life that's got PT on it. And then a fair amount of people because it was um in the early days, or not early days, but a while ago. Like I lost mines whenever I was transferring drives. I didn't even pull it across drives because I didn't think that I had to. I thought I actually, uh, I would end up wiping my drive accidentally whenever I was trying to copy stuff across. So I, I, I missed out. And the other people are actually like constantly having to like do that, have a drive, a donor drive, and then the drive that you're putting in, doing three hard drives just to back up their, their data to hold on to their copy of PT. 
Uh, I should walk you guys through that process sometime because it's a if you actually are if this is something that you are concerned about, then we could all be losing data constantly. We could be losing games that are actually going to be moved on from history. And I think I think some of it is because there's going to be a lot of games that are going to lose support or no longer be supported by their developers on these services now. Um, a wee example that pops into my head is uh, a free-to-play game that I've been playing for months now. And I did a video for it ages back. For like I sent you, I did a first 15 about how horrible and how frustrating and how pay-to-win and whatever else the game was. And I still play it because it's just a series of numbers flicking up on the screen. And it's like the gambling thing or the, the little tones and bits and bobs inside my head that actually like that clash register noise whenever I'm playing it. Means that I can't stop playing Adventure Capitalist until I complete all the planets that are there. But obviously, the game has been expanded upon so much more and as regular events and material on the mobile service of the game because it makes them probably a butt-ton more money. But the PlayStation 4 version has been almost pretty much abandoned. Like It said, he says, coming soon, all the information for it. I've tried to get uh, customer support for the PS4 version, and they said, we can't give you any individual support for the PS4. Would you like us to transfer your account across to mobile so you can continue playing with us? I was like, really? <laughs> you just want to transfer me across? You just want me to start again on your mobile service? Because you know that it's more likely that I'll spend money on your service because of the convenience of it. So, screw you guys. No, I'm going to finish your game on PS4, get my goddamn trophies, and walk the fuck away. So, yeah, um, this was a bit of a rambling diatribe about PS Plus games, Hong Kong PSN, and uh, digital archiving of our games that we might have access to, while listening to and watching grotesquery in Goat Simulator. I feel like this could actually work probably better for podcasts in future. Should I just do something like this? Just play Goat Simulator in the background and have one event happening on repeat for the entire time. And you guys can just watch that while you listen to me. Just talk my ass off about whatever topic I feel like. Tell me in the comments what you think. Uh, do you agree with uh, the fact that uh, companies have the full right to take games off of you? Because, I mean, it's not a legal loophole. It's a legal standard Like because they're selling your service, not a game. Do you buy hard copy? Do you actually stay with hard copy now? Uh, because... I'm starting to get the feeling that I'm going to start having a larger hard copy collection. Not for the big, big games. The ones I know that will exist on many platforms forever. But it's some of the weirder individual titles that I like to get or imports that just won't have support. I'm starting to do it already for the PS Vita. Because uh, I find, well, the Vita's dying, really. So any games that get released on the Vita now are going to be in a limited, more, more limited supply. And they'll be uh, something that I'll want to hold on to for a longer time. And if I don't get around to playing them now, I, of course, have the PS TV, which is already dead. And play them on that as well. So, uh, yeah, guys. If you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching. You can always remember to hit the subscribe button up here. It'll immediately uh, let you hear and see all the messages. all Not all the messages. All the videos that come up on this channel on a regular basis. And over on this side over here, over the top of our horrifying Groot simulated violence is our list of recent episodes uh best episode recommended for you and another episodes of cold open here on the channel if you like what i did here if you like the idea of me doing a more of a podcasty kind of conversational tone talking about topics that are big at the time uh feel free to say so in the comments i would love to do more stuff like that gameplay is always king here on the channel but i would rather uh i'd rather get to vent my opinions and see what you guys think as well so thank you very much for watching and i will see all you dudes in the next video Bye.